in downtown Price, Utah, sits an impressive display of the wonders of archaeology found here in our very own state. And inside the museum, you might find... I'm Tim Riley. I'm the director and curator of archaeology here at the Utah State University Eastern Prehistoric Museum. As a wealth of knowledge, he can tell you pretty much anything you want to know about the artifacts here. The reason why this museum exists here in Eastern Utah is because we're telling the story on my side as the archaeologist of native history through their objects. But the object that is a main focus is rock art, and it's what's been dubbed the longest art gallery in the world, telling us secrets from the past. To explore these mysteries, right? So that's one thing that's always exciting, and there's always more to learn, um, but also just that thrill of discovery. And when I say the longest art gallery in the world, I don't mean here. So Nine Mile Canyon is an interior canyon in the Book Cliffs, or the Tavapus Plateau. And the reason why it's so important, not just to Utahns, but for uh, people from around the world to come to visit this canyon, is because it's sometimes considered the world's longest art gallery. And what we mean by that is that it has an incredible density and amount of rock art images that indigenous peoples from Utah have left behind. getting out of one museum and into another. And there's multiple different time periods and even uh, what we would call an archeological culture represented. And this one is sort of the iconic panel. There's another one on the other side, but this is one that's called the Great Hunt. Tim took us to some of the sites along the 40 mile stretch. But overall, it's a pretty powerful panel. It's one of the icons of the canyon. Of Nine Mile Canyon. Based on people who've studied it for decades at this point, has probably close to a thousand panels, um, at least 500 of which have been documented. So who did all this? Well, some of the later work is from the Ute tribe. Most of the rock art in there is by a group of people we call the Fremont. Now this is named after the river, which is named after the geographer, John Fremont, but we don't really know what these people would have called themselves. When we say that term as archeologists, what we mean is that these are people who were corn farmers, who lived in pit structures, and had certain other characteristics. And they were farmers here from roughly about 400 AD to about 1300, 1350 AD. From the start of the canyon, you'll travel along a paved road with the occasional cattle drive, with an elk sighting far out of cell phone range. And sometimes you hear people say, why would they have made art out here in the middle of nowhere? Well, it's not the middle of nowhere for them, right? There are communities up and down that canyon. As evidenced by the structures that sit high above the canyon floor. There are probably a hundred or more granaries we know of up and down this canyon. These structures once held food and items from people that came before us by hundreds of years. And evidence of those before is also in a place called Rasmussen Cave. But it does look like it's been driven off of something. A cave dwelling where many generations probably lived. So here's an example of a flake. You would drive this off of a bigger object in order to make sharp stone tools. With rock art everywhere, and even holes dug into the rock as tools. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they are a little bit redder, so maybe they're grinding up ochre to make a, a pigment. But where there's wonder, there's also tragedy. And that guy was just sick of people messing around with it. On this native pictograph, a nearby property owner spray painting private property, no trespassing. And this isn't the only spot vandalism has occurred. There's vandalism cases on rock art basically every year in Utah. Uh, almost every year in Nine Mile, there's some impacts. Bullet holes and scratching into the rock face are common. Some of it is people wanting to leave their own mark nearby or on rock art. Again, that is against the law. That's not worth the potential penalties uh, to do that. But beyond that, even minor changes can have a big impact. Every time you visit a site, you are impacting it. So when those sites are impacted by our behaviors today, we're losing that part of the archeological and historic record. Even the oils from your hands can disturb the petroglyphs. So look, but don't touch. But looking, you could spend days in this canyon, finding every panel along this 40 mile stretch. Slow down and take your time. If you see a pull off, stop, get out, look around. 
There might not be anything obvious to you right away, but if you're looking at the various patinated surfaces, you will see stuff that's evidence of past human behavior. With everyone telling a story. This isn't just the world's longest art gallery. This is a place that people lived in and died in and farmed and made their own beads and traded with people outside of the canyon. And it really helps show a story of the life of the people who lived out here. With the hope that this place can tell their stories for generations to come. The reality is we want to share this with our kids and our kids, 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 and so on and so forth. If we want to share the past with the future, we have to be the stewards today to preserve that.